Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And welcome to the State of the Saints podcast. And this is a very special podcast, Who That Nation, because I got an opportunity to do this podcast with my older brother, EJ Jones. What's going on, man? What's up, Who That Nation? This your boy, EJ Jones, checking in again for the Who That uh, Nation and the uh, State of the Saints podcast. What's up? And thank you very much for taking the time out, man, for, you know, doing the podcast with me. It's been a long time since we did a podcast together, man. Probably like maybe like a, a year and some change. Uh, we were doing a, a podcast called uh, Two Brothers Podcast. Uh, and I talk about you quite a bit on the show, man, talking about how much, um, you know, I love sports is because of you and how we used to like sit down and, and uh, read those old college football magazines you used to get from the store every year. <laughs> Yeah, so tell no man, doubt, tell them, no doubt. Yeah, tell us a little bit about that, man, before we get started, man. You know, so let everybody know you ain't you ain't know who that amateur out here. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm a veteran out here in these streets for my who that nation. <laughs> I mean, uh, even when we suck, you know, we still is wearing a, the the brown paper bags, even though we probably prefer for them to be plastic bags sometimes. Yeah, but yeah, I was still following my who that nation. I was still following my Saints. Yeah, man. I still buy those college football magazines. <laughs> and every time you no know, football season come around or whatever, yeah. shout out to them Tigers. One of that natty last year. Yes, sir. Yeah, man, I talk about that all the time. I definitely do. Like, I, I talk about how we used to, like, we used to walk to school, like, you know, when we were going to Dillard. I was a freshman, and well, you were like a junior or senior at the time. And we used mm -hmm. to walk there, and, and on the way, we used to quiz each other on what players went to what school, you know. So uh, I always thought that was pretty dope, man, you know. And, I mean, I kind of fell in love with sports, you know, by doing that. But, I mean, we, we're big fans of New Orleans, saying we both born and raised in New Orleans. And, you know, there's a lot of things that we can be proud of to be Saints fans as of late. You know, the Saints seem like they are uh, really trying to make some moves. Uh, a lot of the moves are in-house, uh, you know. Uh, I, I was been I've been telling the Who That Nation E that you know even the Saints went thirteen and three. It's not like they just have to disband this team. You know they don't seem like you know it's not like they're five and eleven or something like that or the Detroit Lions or the Cincinnati Bengals. But I want to know what you think, man. What do you think about the New Orleans Saints re-signing most play, most of the players that are already on the team? What do you think about that? Not only was it important that they resign most of the players from the team, it was necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can make a fair argument, a pretty good argument, that the Saints probably have the top five or top ten roster in all of football, pretty much. Right. I mean, you can you have teams like the 49ers, the Chiefs, the Patriots, even without Tom Brady, they won't be in the Super Bowl this year. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you have teams like that, that some of the got worse, them that kind of got a little bit better. The mm -hmm. Saints, I would say they teetering kind of like on a flat line as far as like have they got better from last year to right now. Yeah. But I think it was important and necessary for them to keep some of those people from off their team, minus somebody like Avon Bell, and you had uh, Malcolm Jenkins for veteran leadership. Mm -hmm. I think that that was necessary. Right. Let's backtrack a little bit. You mentioned Malcolm Jenkins. Um, man, I get emails, people DMing me, telling me, do I think this is a good move? Do I think this is a bad move? What do you think about Malcolm Jenkins coming back to the New Orleans Saints? I don't think Malcolm Jenkins was the same person he was with the Saints. Mm -hmm. Depending on who you talk to, that could be good. Depending on who you talk to, that could be bad. All I know about the Malcolm Jenkins they're getting right now, he's over 30 years old. Right. He's a Super Bowl champion. Mm -hmm. <coughs> He's a high player in the Players Association. He was a leader on the Philadelphia Eagles team, the same one that went to the the, the Super Bowl right. and won. Right. So, hey, that man, how, how they see it in the business? That man, he got some animals on the wall. He got some, some he skins got some on the wall. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he got some skins on the wall. He even came back to the Saints or whatever. Yeah. He won a Super Bowl with the Saints. He won one with the Philadelphia. And I, I think this is a strong move. Remember, you putting him in the same spot that Von Bell was in. Right. Well, you know, I look at it too, E. You know, I think sometimes in a Who That Nation, we look at a player and we don't look at the growth of that particular player. Like, I look at when when people are telling me about Malcolm Jenkins, I think they're talking about Malcolm Jenkins when he came in, what, 2009 or something like that. 
when he got mm-hmm. drafted in 2009. And I look at Malcolm Jenkins now, it's like he's a seething veteran. And some of the things that he did, you know, he probably wouldn't do anymore, you know, now that he has, you know, some some games under his belt, I mean, some knowledge under his belt. I mean, I'll give you, I'll give you one example, right? Okay, a couple of years back, uh, the Saints played the Seattle Seahawks in the Superdome, and they, and they had a very young, inexperienced Earl Thomas. And Earl Thomas was like really getting misused, you know, in in the secondary. And the second time the Saints played them, they played them out there in Century Link, and I think that was that Monday Night Football game where they just completely destroyed the Saints. And um, after the mm-hmm. game, uh, they talked to Earl Thomas, and he said, you know, what was, uh, you know, what do you think about the game? He said, I just wanted Drew Brees to know I wasn't the same rookie I was when we came and visited the Superdome. This is the same way when you look at Malcolm Jenkins. Malcolm Jenkins was the guy that was giving up the big tackles. He was the one that was getting beaten coverage. Uh, you know, and, and now I look at Malcolm Jenkins. I mean, he went away for six years. I mean, this is a guy that played all six years, never missed a game in a Philadelphia Eagles uniform. This is a guy who was had a captain C on his chest uh, for five of those six years and completely, like, you know, solidified their secondary, man. I mean, last season, the Philadelphia Eagles, I mean, man, it, it seemed like it was a trauma unit up in that thing, especially in the secondary. Mm-hmm. But he was the only one back there, and they and they they did enough to make it to the postseason, man. And, uh, you know, you got to give props what props is due. You know, I understand Von Bell from a youth standpoint. You want to keep your young players and – and Malcolm Jenkins is 32 years old, but um, you can't, man, you, bro, you can't take away uh, leadership. You know what I mean? When you have somebody that's a leader back then, I feel like that's something that the Saints needed uh, for years was a leader. You know, you got those older guys. You had Kenyon Coleman and and guys like that. I mean, you know what I'm saying? You had guys like that on the team, but, I mean, those guys didn't really have that much experience or, uh, you know, any – any jewelry, a guy can look back there and say, man, that's what I want to do. Then I think it really helps somebody like Marcus Williams, a guy that I look at and I, I see a young Malcolm Jenkins. So I really think that he will be able to help the Saints secondary. But Saints have made some other moves, man. Of course, uh, you know, the New Orleans Saints, you know, they re-signed Andrews Pete, and uh, that's a hot topic too. Um, Andrews Pete. Uh, of course, played the guard position. I didn't think he was going to come back to the Saints. I, I didn't think that. So, um, what do you think about Andrews P coming back and signing a five-year <clears throat> deal, man? Well, I want to say that deal is north of forty million dollars. It might even be more than that. I think fifty-seven but, million dollars, if I'm not mistaken. Fifty-seven, 57 million dollars. Yeah, with a capital M. Fifty-seven yeah. M. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you have Armstead, you have Pete, you still have Wolford. I mean, you still have Ramshack. I mean, you're looking at probably a top three or top five offensive line, if not the best offensive line, yeah. probably in the league yeah. this side of Indianapolis Colts yeah. or the Cowboys or whatever, if you could still have the Cowboys up there. Yeah. But uh, I, think, I, think, I think it's a good move. Now, it could probably be not so good a move if he wound up missing 10, 20 games within the next two or three years. That could probably be problematic. Uh, I mean, problematic for him or whatever. Mm-hmm. So, I'm thinking if he does miss a lot of games within these two years, the Saints will proceed to either trade him or cut him. But as of now, I mean, he's young. That if you're going to give anybody money, let it be an offensive lineman, and yet it be let it be a young offensive lineman. So, yeah. I mean, I think he's he could be on his way. The next person to get paid would be Ramchek, though, because this guy, I mean, if he's not one of the best guards. In the league, my goodness, and he's been he's been playing at a high level for two or three years now too. So yeah, he should be the next one getting the check. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I look, I know people have problems with Andrews Pete. A lot of people think that he kind of you know kind of soft. Um, I, I can see that. I can, I can see that argument with that man. It's it's been games where he was getting mold you know mold over and stuff like that by you know by defensive ends and. I think we can look at that Minnesota Vikings game, and I think they need to burn that tape, uh, especially like, you know, the majority of the pressure was coming uh, from up the middle where the right guards the were, you know. So, uh, yep. you know, but I'm not ready to give up on Andrews Pete. I think the Saints really believe in this guy. 
I mean, he was what a first round pick. I think it was like pick number twelve or thirteen, something like that, back in the day. Yeah. So the New Orleans Saints have a lot of confidence in this guy, and um, it, it showed with you know resigning him for for five years, man. I, I would have thought maybe like three because that seemed like that's the new wave right now. Everybody wants a three year deal. I'm looking at these other teams. Everybody signing three year deals, but you know to get Andrews P on on the payroll for five years, you know I really think that's saying something. And not just from Andrews Pete's standpoint, but from the Saints standpoint to say, man, this is my <clears> guy. But um, let's we let's talk about uh, Janoris Jenkins now. Janoris Jenkins, um, he gets an extension. He signs a two year extension with the New Orleans Saints. Now the first the the first uh, you know he found, he signed a uh, I think like a uh, he restructured his contract. Um, one day he restructured his contract, and I think he got like seven million dollars signing bonus or something like that. And the next day. He ended up getting a two-year extension. Uh, Janora Jenkins came to the New Orleans Saints late last season, E. And, uh, you know, he really played, I think, maybe like three games. But every every game, it seemed like he's gotten better. Do you think the Saints answered the question um, of who is that number two cornerback outside of Marshawn Lattimore? I mean, for now. I mean, if you look at the last six games of the year, mm -hmm. yeah. Would you rather have Janora Jenkins or would you have Eli Apple? I think a lot if of you people. did a poll, <laughs> yeah, if you did a poll on Facebook, I think we all have our answer. One thing about Janoris Jenkins that I like when he was with St. Louis, I mean, I said St. Louis. Yeah, man, he, he was I with St. Myself, he was with St. Louis at the time. They were the St. Louis Rams. Yeah, so Rams. Okay, right. okay. Yeah, you're right. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, when he was with the Rams, whatever. I mean, he was dependable. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was a he was a guy you you ain't mess with whatever he threw to that other side or whatever. Right. I think he. One thing I like about the Saints secondary now, they got a variety of youth and veteran leadership. Janoa Jenkins, he's 30 years old. You got Malcolm Jenkins now, who probably going to be like the quarterback of the whole secondary or whatever. Yeah. And you got a bunch of young guys. Yeah. The other young guys they have, what, they've been in the league at most four or five years maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> and you got C.J. Gardner-Johnson, who's mm -hmm. probably going – Grow into the mode of a Malcolm Jenkins or somebody like who I really like. Yeah, me too. I like him a whole lot better than Von Bell, who mm -hmm. just signed, I believe, with the Raiders, if I'm not mistaken. No, nah, the Bengals. So, he signed with the Bengals. Um, the Bengals, okay, yeah, the yeah. Bengals. Eli so, Apple uh, Eli Apple went to the Raiders. He went to the Raiders, yeah. So uh, I, I really like uh, what they have in their secondary. I mean, uh, I think you know Jenkins over at Eli Apple. He, Eli Apple was, uh, for, for lack of a better word, confused. <laughs> about what they was doing or just flat out getting beat mm. like a Persian world yeah. in India somewhere. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, look, I think the thing about Janora Jenkins, he, what he brings is confidence. And um, it's not like the game's ever going to get too big for him because he played in the New York market, man, for like four years. And I think that kind of, you know, plays a huge role. It didn't really work out for Eli Apple because, in my opinion, I think his mom was too much involved in his life. And, um, you know, I just think that that's one of the reasons why he failed in New York is because, um, you know, he was – I mean, he was one of those guys that was hard on his sleeve. And we all know, man, you got to have like a cutthroat type mentality or you got to be Eli Manning to make it in New York. Like, you just got to just let things just rub off you. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter. But uh, when it comes to Janoris Jenkins, man, I mean, just seeing this guy, this guy walks with a, with a swag of confidence, man, and – you know, even in that Minnesota Vikings game, man, he had Stephon Diggs ticked off on the sidelines, throwing his helmet, mad because he wanted the football. Probably was telling him, man, you ain't getting the ball. You know, you know what I'm saying. And and that's how you want it. That's how you want an offensive player. Yeah. You want them frustrated. You don't want them dancing and smiling and stuff like that. Yeah, you yeah. want them Keyshawn Johnson and only on the sidelines. So that's what you want. Yeah, man, you want you want to get them, you know, that to mode. You know, what I'm saying walking back and forth like you he, he did back in the day with Donovan mm -hmm. McNabb. You, you, I mean, mm -hmm. in, in my honest and humble opinion, you know, I just think that Janoris Jenkins is the answer right now. Uh, do I think that they're out the woods when it comes to the secondary? Absolutely not. You know, I'm still not nope. sold on Patrick Robinson. I know he had a couple good nah, games. Yeah. But nah, he, yeah, either. yeah, but he, I mean, he stayed hurt. He, I mean, he stayed hurt. Yeah. I mean, that Tennessee Titan game probably was the best game he had back in the Saints uniform. But I still think the Saints need to maybe draft somebody or pick up somebody in free agency at that nickel corner position because I just think it's a matter of time before Patrick Robinson end up getting hurt. I mean, it's inevitable, you know. So mm -hmm. I, I still don't think they're out the woods. But when it comes to the outside, I think they're fine. 
I don't think P.J. Williams is coming back. I didn't hear anything about him coming back, so I don't think that's going to happen. And and the Saints also, uh, you know, extended Kiko Alonso, somebody that I do like. But once again, one of those guys that is good but can't stay healthy. Um, I, what do you think about Kiko Alonso? Speedy, rangy, but, you know, like you said, can never stay healthy. He didn't stay healthy in Buffalo. He didn't stay healthy in, in, in Miami. And since he's been with the Saints, I mean, he hasn't been healthy. Mm-hmm. He's got good range with him, like 6'3", six, 6'4", six, something mm-hmm. like that. And it's always hurt. Yep. I mean, if you could have him on the field with uh, Antoloni, I mean, he have a pretty good defense. They have a lot of speed and range in that. Yep. A whole lot. I mean, yeah. Adam make a whole – if Antelone can stay, if he, if he can stay healthy for the whole year, Adam make a difference. Yep. Yeah, I agree. You know, I think that Antelone is one of those guys that is really good when he's on the field. And also Kiko Alonso, man. I mean, Kiko Alonso is a, a run stuffer, man. Um, he's a guy that, I mean, he, he plays really, really physical. i never forget that game where he, where he almost knocked Joe Flacco out cold. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that game when he had Taylor Gabriel, he picked him up on his shoulder and carrying about 20 yards <laughs> after he made the tackle. So, I mean, Kiko Alonso, he can do some good things. And um, I think that he will be a, uh, you know, somebody that will help the Saints' uh, uh, defense. But now that you look at the Saints, okay, um, the Saints have been wanting a, a number two receiver. The Who That Nation has been asking for a number two receiver. And they go out and they get Emmanuel Sanders. Now, Emmanuel Sanders is 32 years old. He'll be 33 by the beginning of the year. And uh, my question is to you is, uh, what do you think about Emmanuel Sanders joining the New Orleans Saints? Do you think it was a good move uh, for the Saints, or do you think that somebody else out there in free agency would have been a better answer? I mean, after what he did to the Saints in the Super Bowl last year, <laughs> I mean, how could that be a bad move? He <laughs> up. Yeah, you did. My, name, my, name, my, my, my first name is fake pretty much. <laughs> he always liked Emmanuel Sanders. When he was with the, when he was with the Broncos, I always yeah. liked uh-huh. When he was a pro bowl, I like. Yeah. And that's another thing that they're going to bring to the team. Just like with the, well, just like with our secondary with Melko Jenkins, he brings veteran leadership. Yep. I mean, you look at the wide receivers that they have. I mean, all the boys got similar on their breath. Yeah. I mean, Emmanuel Sanders, that's somebody else to bring. He puts, got skins on the wall. Yeah. He didn't want a Super Bowl. Yeah. Played in another Super Bowl. Yeah. He had been in a Pro Bowl. I mean, ain't too many things this dude hadn't did. And he's still going I mean, even though Michael Thomas is a beast, mm-hmm. so he still can learn from another veteran or whatever. Yeah. So how could this be a bad move? I mean it's a it's a it's a better move than having Ted Ginn come in and catch thirty eight catches for like four hundred something yards yeah. and drop about twenty of them. <laughs> Emmanuel Sanders, he got short hands. I mean, if Michael Thomas gonna catch a hundred balls, he gonna catch about seventy, mm-hmm. maybe for like nine hundred, maybe a thousand yards or something like the right. offense that we have. You are gonna have when him and Thomas, both of them gonna have a thousand yards. I'm, I'm just gonna say that right now. He's gonna have at least ten touchdowns. Right. So it's gonna bring some pressure off of Drew Brees and Michael Thomas. I think Michael Thomas might be the happiest person of all that they did get Emmanuel Sanders. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do too, man. You know, I looked at uh, Emmanuel Sanders, and, you know, this this says two things to me. It says, number one, that the Saints aren't going to get a wide receiver in the first round of the draft. That That's what it says, number one. Number two, I think that the Saints have a little bit more confidence in some of these younger wide receivers than we're giving them credit for. I mean, the jury's still out on Emmanuel Butler, you know, another Emmanuel. You know, uh, you know mm-hmm. uh, this guy's like training – like he's losing his mind or something like that. Every every Instagram, every Twitter video I see, I see him working out. Um, he's on somebody's football field catching passes, running routes. So I, I really feel like the Saints made that like his red shirt year last year because they didn't want to put mm-hmm. him on the field and it affects his confidence. And the next thing you know, I mean, you got yourself another Brandon Coleman experiment going wrong. And I, I think when you look at Emmanuel mm-hmm. Butler, I think he's a big physical guy. I think he just needed to get a little bit stronger, and the Saints understood that. They thought he needed to get a little bit physical, and they understood that as well. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I think, I'm thankful that the Saints organization didn't listen to the peer pressure of the, of the fans. You know, the fans were, were clamoring, warning Emmanuel Butler to hit the field. Why Emmanuel Butler ain't out there? Where's Emmanuel Butler? Yada, yada, yada. But 
They didn't listen, and they and they put them on the sidelines, and they allowed Lil Jordan Humphreys and Keyshawn Hogan to go out there and play, and um they they kept him in a Saints uh warm up jersey, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and I think that was a good move. So now year two, I think he's going to be a lot bigger. He's going to be a lot more physical. Uh, he's probably going to have a little bit more of a grown man body. And I think he's going to be able to be that that number three or even that number four receiver, depends on what Traquan Smith does. So I don't think the Saints yeah. are going to try to get somebody in the in the draft at the wide receiver position. And if they do, it's going to be in those later rounds. And I, I tell the folks in the Who That Nation all the time, this is a deep draft for wide receivers. So you don't have to go out here. Very and, deep. Yeah, you don't have to go and get a, a Justin Jefferson or – or C.D. Lamb in order for, you know, your team to be able to get some production out of a young wide receiver. I mean, there's plenty of guys out there that can do some things. You know, I, I heard, uh, according to Mel Kuyper's uh, mock draft, uh, they had Brandon Ayuk out of Arizona State going to the Saints. But now they're saying that the Saints, uh, you know, going to be picking up uh, linebacker Kenneth uh, Murray out of o- uh, Oklahoma, who I feel like is a really good linebacker. So, uh, yeah. So let me ask you this: uh, linebacker or quarterback? What do you think the Saints going to do in the first round, or do you think they're going to pick another position? It's going to be another position. Uh, as much as I like for them to get a linebacker, I mean, if, if they do draft a linebacker in the first round, like whose spot would he take? I mean, you got Anthony Loney; he's been playing a few years. You got Kiko Alonso; he's frequently hurt. Yeah. But he's a starter now. The Mario Davis, you know, he ain't going nowhere. Right. Law for me, he should have been a Pro Bowler twice already so i'm trying to figure out exactly what it needs first round help at i mean i guess it could be at wide receiver but trey kwan smith will have to have a a horrible year and that linebacker kiko alonzo or antelone would have to get hurt again or something like that Mm -hmm. but i mean other than you don't need you don't need help at tight end cook i mean he's still you know he's doing pretty good i would say the only place I would say you would need help, maybe, and don't laugh at this, probably would be at cornerback or somewhere like that. Maybe if you just want to draft another cornerback. Yeah. I don't think a cornerback would be an answer because you just made Taysom Hill a first round uh, tradable for first round or whatever. So yeah. he's basically you're making him a backup quarterback and potentially the heir apparent. Somebody in waiting is the case Drew Brees retires after this year. Mm-hmm. So. It probably would be cornerback or maybe perhaps quarterback, maybe, I guess. I don't – I'm yeah. just guessing. Yeah, well, well, let me ask you this, man. Like, okay, uh, court, okay, quarterback or linebacker, do you think that they would pick a linebacker before a quarterback? I heard you say a corner. But if you, if you were thinking, like, if you're in the Saints war room, do you think that they would pick up a linebacker in the first round – or do you think they'll pick up a quarterback more so? Which, which one do you think? Saints really have to love a quarterback, and I hear they love uh, love out of uh, Utah State. Uh-huh. So I hear they kind of love him. I yeah. don't think he's going to be down around where the Saints have to pick. Yeah. So most likely they probably would be a linebacker. But Sean Payton, you, you know this and I know this, his whole time since 2006 being with the Saints, he does like drafting corner uh, uh, quarterbacks late. Yeah, I mean he had Garrett Gilbert. I mean he always been doing that. So yeah. wouldn't surprise me like in the third or fourth round, you get a quarterback from a college probably you never heard of. You, know, you just know the Saints gonna draft somebody from the school you never heard of. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard. I even heard like them talking about some dude out of Princeton or something like that. If I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the Saints are always, like, looking for those diamonds in the rough. Like, you mentioned Gary Grayson, you know, out of Colorado State. So, I mean, mm-hmm. it didn't really pan out, but it, I don't think they're going to go wide receiver, man. I mean, Emmanuel Sanders didn't answer the question for him to be your number two. And speaking of number two, uh, Sean Payton came out earlier this week, said that uh, Taysom Hill is the backup quarterback to Drew Brees, and they will not change his Swiss Army knife role. So, what do you think about that, man? What do you think about Taysom Hill being the number two backup quarterback? And do you think he'll still be able to do what he been doing at the rate he was doing it last season, being that Swiss Army Knight player? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a forward over the suspense I'll give you all and just say no. <laughs> I don't think he can do – I don't think he could do the same thing he was doing 
I mean, I know who that nation, I, I know we all seen these plays that he made in that Minnesota game. Mm-hmm. And if he was playing at quarterback, the Saints would have won that game. Oh, yeah. But yeah. be that as it may, no, I don't think he can do that. I think that's hazardous. Taysom Hill got a history of uh, getting hurt. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know he's been healthy these last two or three years with the Saints. I actually watched him when he was at BRU. Yeah, he missed me two seasons yep. with a torn ACL. Yep. The guy's almost 30 as it is. Mm-hmm. I don't think he should be doing it, even though that stuff he was doing. I mean, nobody wanted to tackle Taysom Hill in the open field. Yep. That's what makes him dangerous. But as a backup quarterback, see what he was a third string backup. I could yeah. see him doing stuff like that because you yeah. had a Teddy Bridgewater who would come in the game and something happened to Drew. Yeah. Now you just them two. Yeah. I don't I don't want him doing that stuff now. Hmm. I mean, unless you're gonna get you already have you already made him the back of quarterback. But I don't want him doing that stuff. I I don't think I mean it's apparent that he's gonna be the heir apparent to Drew Brees when he retires. So I don't want him doing that stuff no more. Yeah, I mean I don't want him to do the stuff either, but we all know Sean Payton is one of the most stubborn human beings on the planet. And, um, you know, he, he's always wanting to be that guy. We just talked about it earlier. He wants to find those diamonds in the rough where he can be like, well, let me show you this. Watch this. Look what I can do with this guy. You know, I mean, you can even – I mean, I'm thinking way back. I'm talking like 2011. I think it was the Saints playing the Green Bay Packers, if you will. I think this was during the time Pierre Thomas – was on 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 the field and Pierre Thomas was running the ball pretty well in that game. And I think it was the like one of the last plays of the game. I think it was like on fourth down, fourth and goal. The Saints had a young Mark Ingram. And Mark Ingram, you know what I'm saying, ran up the middle and got stuffed. And it, I mean, if you looked at that game, Pierre Thomas should have been a guy who should have ran that ball in for the touchdown. But of course, Sean Payton had this new shiny toy named Mark Ingram. I mean, you see so many of these different instances. I mean, from the Jimmy Graham plays that should have been Darren Sproles plays or some other players. You know, like he always wanted to use those guys that people never heard of, never seen. And Taysom Mill is just the next man up. And I feel like he cannot use him the same way and he won't use him the same way. Uh, I'm kind of nervous that he will, but if he wants to continue to have success, he doesn't have a Teddy Bridgewater anymore. So if you go out here and get Taysom Hill hurt, you have to hope and pray that Drew Brees can play the entire season. I mean, I know that's crazy. I mean, I think that we're giving, we need to be giving Drew Brees the benefit of the doubt here. I mean, that was just an anomaly, him getting hurt, because he rarely ever does. Yeah. But I'm saying, though, you, you can't be doing the same thing. I mean, when Teddy Bridgewater was in the game, you noticed that his production and some of his Swiss Army knife role kind of changed because – he was the number two backup. So there's only yep. two things that I can see that can happen here. It's rather the Saints are going to get somebody in free agency that's a backup quarterback to Drew Brees so Taysom Hill can go ahead and continue his role as that Swiss Army knife, or they're going to draft a player like Jalen Hurts that can come into the game, that can do some of the things that uh, Taysom Hill was doing and, and allow Taysom Hill to be served as a backup. Or maybe he can still do some of those things because you still have Jalen Hurts learning. That's the only that way I see sense. that happen. Yeah, I mean, that's that the only way. That makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. And that's very interesting that you mentioned Jalen Hurts. Yep. Jalen Hurts and Taysom Hill are kind of similar or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you want to talk about accuracy, yeah, I get a nod to Hill. Yeah. But as far as like athleticism, speed, power, that makes a lot of sense. Yep. But will Sean Payton will he pull the trigger? Make her, yeah, yeah would he, but the Saints usually only carry two quarterbacks during the season anyway. Yeah. So Jalen Hurts, he'll spend his time in the practice squad and training camp and all of that kind of stuff. Right, right. So that but that may that's, that's an intriguing idea that you just said though. Yeah. I, I could, I could, that's a good idea. I, I think that's probably something that he probably he probably he probably is thinking about that, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. He, and, I mean, this also answers your question, too, when you t- and also uh, kind of, you know, gives your, your statement earlier a little bit more merit when you said that the Saints try to get, like, quarterbacks later in rounds. Jalen Hurts is not going to be, like, a top uh, first-round draft pick or even probably in the number two. It's probably going to be, like, in the third round somewhere or probably the late second round. Um, I guess that's probably the best bet. Um, that he's going to come on somebody's team. 
And I think that a lot of teams are probably going to be looking at Jalen Hurts due to the fact of how much success Lamar Jackson had last season. So they're probably looking at him being the same type of quarterback, even though I feel like he's a little bit more polished as a quarterback because he, he went out there to Oklahoma with Lincoln Riley, and you know what Lincoln Riley can do with those quarterbacks. He kind of you know showed his, his arm strength and his talent. So I think that he would be a good fit for the New Orleans Saints, you know, as far as like the things that he can do. He can roll out of the pocket. Um I feel like Jalen Hurts could be possibly the, the second coming of Russell Wilson if he goes to the right team because he plays almost similar to Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson extends plays, you know, scrambling around in the pocket, very elusive. Uh, you know, eventually Jalen Hurts is going to be one of those quarterbacks that's not looking to run. I think probably in the, earlier in his career, he's probably going to be one of those players that's going to be ready to run. But later on in his career, he's probably going to be one of those people like Russell Wilson is now who is not looking to run, but will run if he has to. So, uh, you know, I think that Jalen Hurts would be a good fit for the New Orleans Saints. Uh, but Taysom Hill, back to, back to him, back to Taysom Hill. Uh, my question now, do you think that Taysom Hill is the undisputed future of the New Orleans Saints? And do you think that Taysom Hill has what it takes to lead the Saints to, to Super Bowls, playoff appearances, and division championships? Do you think so? That's a tough question. He wanted to play Nasha Dumb. I mean, uh, <laughs> potentially. Yeah, potentially. I mean, you got you to put this in perspective, too. He's going on his third season, learning from somebody like Drew Brees, listening to somebody like Sean Payton, mm -hmm. getting tutelage or whatever from these two people. Right. Not to mention before then, he was under Aaron Rodgers mm -hmm. and Mike McCartan. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Given this dude was already mature when he came into the NFL, being married and, you know, the Mormon thing where you have yeah. to do the Missionary. missions and all. So yeah, he yeah. came into the league yeah. mature and everything. He came into the league, he just honed those skills and everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think Taysom Hill will be as good as he want to be. I, I think the sky's kind of the limit for him. Mm -hmm. But it's about what the Saints will have once Drew Brees is gone, pretty much, if they mm -hmm. could keep a lot of the team intact. Right. I mean, I think he can have some success. Would it be multiple Super Bowl success? I don't know. Right. I do know where Drew Brees is weak at. He is stronger. Yep. Uh, Drew Brees has the accuracy. He does have the bigger arm, the athleticism, mm -hmm. and uh, all of that stuff. But I don't know. The, the jury will be out on that. Uh, could it be as successful as Drew Brees was? I don't know about that. I don't know. As of um, now, I, I don't know. I can't like, give a definitive answer about that. Well, I give a definitive answer. I don't think so. Um, I've said this on several shows that I don't think that he will lead the Saints to the Super Bowl. I feel like he's the quarterback that will keep the team afloat. Um, we all know, man, that some Saints fans don't think like others. You got some Saints fans that want the Saints to be successful, go to the Super Bowl every year. And then you got Saints fans that are just happy they're not what they used to be. Shouts out to our grandmother. <laughs> I love you, grandma. Hey, I love you, grandma. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you know, they, she falls into that category where you know. I mean, we've had conversations. I mean, I've even played some of the conversations here on the State of the Saints podcast that I've had with her when she was saying, like, when I was talking about Drew Brees uh, in a playoff game. Uh, she's one of those people that feel like you know the Saints aren't what they used to be, and we should be a little bit more joyful and happy, you know. But Nah, I mean, nah, but when nah. you when you taste, <laughs> I mean, honestly, when you taste the nectar of prosperity, you don't want to go back and be drinking that corner store Mad Dog twenty twenty yeah. type bull crap no more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, exactly. I, I mean, man, Ooh. honestly, man, honestly, when you go to a nice restaurant, you taste for the man, yo, man, you don't want to go out there and get them eight dollar steaks no more. You know what I'm saying? You starting uh -huh. to look for the the thirteen fourteen dollar big steaks. You know what I'm saying? You you you, you get what I'm saying. You know, you don't want to keep exactly on. what you say. Yeah, you don't want to go mm. back. You know, you don't want to go back to those old times. It's good to reminisce about the old times. You know, me and you reminisce about the old times all the time. Sitting on the floor, you know what I'm saying? Listening to the Saints game, Jim Henderson, you know, in, in, in our grandmother's den area. You know, we, we and, mm. and, and, and uh, getting put in a figure four leg lock by our uncles. You know what I'm saying? Like, we love mm. reminiscing about those type of times. But, I mean, when you taste success, man, and you taste like – Super Bowls, and you, you see where this team can possibly go. 
you know, it, it, it's hard for you to want to go back to those particular points. And it's hard for you to want to stay patient, especially when these, these teams have been so successful over the past three years. I mean, three years, the Saints have had better regular season records than any other team in the NFL. So you don't want to see them go back. But in my honest opinion, I don't think that he's the answer. You know, I think that, like I said, some fans will be excited, you know, he throws the ball or he makes a long run and they dig and cheer and, you know, put up the uh, Tom Benson umbrellas in the Superdome. But, you know, are they winning any games? Is that generating the, the regular season wins? Is that generating to division titles? Is that the transition in the first round buys and Super Bowls? My honest opinion, I don't think that that's going to happen. E. I just don't. I just mm -hmm. think that he is going to be the guy that's just going to right the ship until the Saints possibly get another young uh, quarterback out of college. And I think that guy is going to be able to lead the Saints to, you know, the promised land. Let's just hope that, you know, somebody like Sean Payton isn't gone or something like that and they have to get a new coach in the process. But, I mean, that just that's just the way that I feel about it. But, I mean, the Saints, they, they do still look good on paper, man. I mean, looking at their offense, it seems like the offense looks better. Uh, you know, the running back position, uh, Alvin Kamara, he talked about it. I'm, I'm, that's the final question I'm going to have for you, E. Alvin Kamara, he came out earlier this offseason, said he was playing the entire season at about 70%. Uh, what do you think about Alvin Kamara's comments? And uh, do you think that Alvin Kamara is going to have a bounce back year this year? You know, well, I, I, I disagree. I respectively disagree with his comments. I don't think he was playing at 70% in that Vikings game. I, I think he was playing at more like 52%, to be <laughs> honest with you. I, I, I think he might have had a long night. Uh, he might have been injured. And he maybe just told him the uh, night someone right with him. Mm -hmm. The only person that seemed like there was 100% in that whole game was Taysom Hill. Yeah. I mean, Michael Thomas is Michael Thomas, but no, I don't even think he was Michael Thomas. Doing it. The only person that was ready to play in that game was Taysom Hill. Yep. That was the only person. And he damn near won the game by himself. Yep. Well, if it wasn't for Drew Brees on a very uh, – I digress. <laughs> but, <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 yeah, that, that's BS. I think he was at like fifty percent doing that game. Yeah. I'm gonna leave it at that. Yeah. Well, do you think he's gonna bounce back this season? Do you think he's gonna have a better season? I do, I do. I think he's gonna uh, bounce back. I think that uh, they should use Murray more uh, in situations last year, especially like the latter part of the year, especially against the Vikings. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just kind of curious as to why he didn't get more touches. Uh, why I Cook? Then get more catches, or at least more targets doing. It. I'm talking specifically about this playoff game which they lost. Right. Why it's like if if Kamara doesn't have a good game, they don't even really try to run the ball. They might give Murray maybe five carries. That's it. Mm -hmm. Murray should be a hundred percent. Obviously if Kamara isn't a hundred percent, why not use Murray? Yeah. They want to put all these big bodies and everything to rush the pass or right up the middle so Drew Brees can't see. Why not use Murray? Run right. up right up the middle or whatever. I mean, we have a real good offensive line. Right. And if they're putting guys right up the middle to obstruct the view of a uh, diminutive quarterback, mm -hmm. why not throw the ball laterally or whatever? Right. Get it out to uh, Kamara in space. Hell, get it out to Murray in space. Yeah. How many people you see want to want to tackle a six foot two, six foot three? 230-pound running back. You not, ain't got many. a lot of guys that want to tackle people like that. Not many. So, I, I just, like, back to what you're saying with Sean Payton being stubborn, yeah. I think that was his stubbornness or whatever. I think they just ate that L. Nobody was motivated to play. They got punched in the mouth, mm -hmm. and they didn't know what to do about it. Right. But Kamara, yeah, he was at 50%. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I think it was a bunch of BS, man. You know, people get mad at me because they say I'll be getting in on Elvin Kamara because – you know, I look at Elvin Kamara, I watch some plays. <clears throat> Elvin Kamara quit on plays. I seen Elvin Kamara, like, run out of bounds when he can turn the ball upfield. And maybe it's because he was at 70%. Maybe that's the reason why he ain't try to cut it back upfield because he was like, man, maybe the team, they need me to be out here. Whatever, you know, like, but at the same time, man, I just don't want to see what I saw last season out of Elvin Kamara. I know he can play tougher than that. I know he's better than what he played. And, you know, I just feel like if he was at 70%, then I got to blame Sean Payton, man, because even though Alvin Kamara is as good as he is, man, Latavius Murray was averaging 158 yards from scrimmage. 
uh, when Alvin Kamara was out those games. It wasn't like, uh, you know, Latavius Murray was out there just playing like hot garbage or something like that, and Kamara just came in. It was the fact that Latavius Murray was out there being a bell cow back, and then when Alvin Kamara came back, it's like Sean Payne was like, well, back to the line. You know, get to the back of the line. You know, like I feel like he kind of did Latavius Murray wrong. And I, I don't like it. You know, I, I, I hear that he's saying he's going to commit to the run this season. But how many times have we heard this? How many times we heard this same old song and dance, Sean Payne saying he's going to commit to the run? I mean, I got T-shirts out right now that say run the ball. You know what I'm saying? Run the ball. It's a commitment that I feel like the Saints ha have been missing for a long time. And it has been, been prohibiting them from making it all the way to the Super Bowl. You look at the San Francisco 49ers, man, last season. I mean, running a football when everybody know in the stadium they about to run the football. They ran the football all over the Vikings, all over the Packers. I mean, made, I mean, honestly, took the manhood of the Green Bay Packers in front of the whole world, man. Straight neutered that's what them. You're doing. Straight neutered that's them what, boys. You know? That's what you're doing, football well. I mean, it's a manhood game. You yep. ain't got the man, most likely you ain't gonna win. Absolutely. And Sean Payton saying he's gonna run the ball is like Hamburglar saying I'm not going to eat tacos right, right exactly. now. <laughs> right, right. I'm going to yeah. start eating tacos. I ain't eat hamburgers no more. Exactly. Sean Payton is a quarterback's coach. Mm -hmm. He wants his quarterback to throw the ball 40, 50 times a game or whatever. Yep. Drew Brees passes and went down or whatever, which they should. I was saying this was like the last two years. Right. I don't think he should throw the ball more than 30 times a game. I think they should run the ball 30 times a game. Well, Make the game go fast. Well, if you're going to have players like that, I mean, you got to have – Man, you got to have a guy with an explosive arm. And Drew Brees doesn't have that explosive arm anymore. I mean, yeah. you look at you look nope. at the Kansas City Chiefs, man. The Kansas City Chiefs, they throwing the ball all over the field because Patrick Mahomes is a freak of nature. He can throw the ball yeah. like on the run 60 yards, you know. But how many people yeah. can do that? Drew Brees can't do that. Drew Brees is a, nope. a time-on-task quarterback that gets yep. the ball where it needs to be. Drew Brees is like Anytime. run. Look, Drew Brees is like run to the end of that barn, and then as soon mm -hmm. as you get to the end of barn, turn around. That's that's what he is. You know what I'm saying? Like he's yep. a, he's a time on task quarterback. He's extremely accurate, but I mean, it is is you know not going to be where you need it to be. He's 41 years old, and you're going to have to run a football in order for you to generate any type of success. That's just a fact. Yep. Yeah, but. But this has been the State of the Saints podcast. Once again, I'd like to thank my brother EJ Jones. Thank you very much, man, for joining the show tonight. Really appreciate it. Man, no, no problem, man. No problem. I got to get full reference out of the deal. It was a good night. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, it's the truth, man. I know you remember those days, man. Shouts out to our uncles Isaac and Jerry, man. All of us are huge wrestling fans. And I remember, you know, watching the old WCW, you know, and, you know, my grandparents used to leave the house. You know, we used to move the furniture around a little bit, you know, grab the blankets, you know what I'm saying, as if, as if they were our Ric Flair robes and, you know what I'm saying, get to the middle of the floor. And, you know, eventually we are, we would be what they call the jobbers, you know what I'm saying, because they were much bigger than us. Yeah, <laughs> and they would still hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they would go out there and beat us up a little bit, man, put a figure for a leg like we'll tap out, you know what I'm saying. But uh, there was some good times, man, it's, and this was a good time with you, man, and you know, I appreciate everything that you do, man. Appreciate the the passion you instilled inside of me to love sports as much as I do, man. And and, and thank you for the time that that you spent in here, man. I appreciate that. Thank you. Man, no problem. No problem. Who that? Yeah, yeah. Y'all check us out, man. Check us out. Uh, the State of the Saints podcast. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. YouTube.com search the State of the Saints podcast. Uh, Facebook.com search the State of the Saints podcast. Uh, e, uh, if they want to uh, find you, how can they do so, man? Uh, you can find me on my Facebook, uh, Emmanuel Jones Senior, and uh, uh, EJ uh, E Jones Art because I do my own art and everything. Yeah. I will be coming up with a a page for the State of the Saints, also a Facebook and a Twitter page. So look out for that. Yeah, man. Yeah, y'all check it out, man. Also, man, it's artwork. Um, the links and stuff like that going to be in the description so y'all can find out, you know, see some of his artwork, see what he does. And, uh, man, thank y'all for y'all love and y'all support. This has been the State of the Saints podcast.